Hi guys, Corporate Player here. Today I'm gonna show you a trick I've learned in Darkest Dungeon on how to play defensively while at the same time keeping a high HP pool throughout your party as well as winning the fights without dying. So we're about to start out this tutorial on how to play smart and defensively by venturing into this uh, dungeon here a veteran level 3 dungeon in the ruins I'm gonna pick my so-called tank the person that's gonna be up front and I'm using a uh, hellion for that that's crucial, you need a hellion and for the number 3 spots you need a jester and then you need you can pick whatever uh, damage dealer you like for uh, the second spot and you would preferably you should have a healer as the last man or woman in the team and uh, that's the basic setup these three spots are more or less fixed you can have a different healer if you like but uh, the jester and as well as the hellion you have to have in order to to uh, succeed with this tactic up front there's the hellion and you need to have the barbaric yaw with the hellion if you don't have that you're gonna have a hard time doing this tactic and you need as the jester you need to have uh, bought and unlocked the battle ballad and preferably you can have the inspiring tune as well for some stress heal at the end of the fight if you like i'll show you more of this later on uh, when we venture into the dungeon it could also be nice to have uh, a healer with uh, some upgraded skills on healing like here divine grace 3 or uh, divine comfort 3 uh, which gives party heal. Enough talking, let's venture into uh, the dungeon and see what uh, lies ahead of us. So what I tend to do when I play is that I tend to play at the high radiant light setting because I like to be able to uh, surprise the enemy to gain the upper hand in every fight. So here's the fight. I have a bit of a problem now because my party isn't lined up the way I wanted to. So I need to change my lineup somehow. But it's not critical at this point. What at this point what we really want to do is that we really want to kill the cultist enchantress because she deals a little bit of damage but she gives a lot of stress uh, because she casts curses and what have you at your team and you don't ever want to take that kind of uh, extra stress decimated penalty and now i was really lucky there uh, lucky again so um you need this uh, battle ballad because if you give the whole party the battle ballad for a couple of turns they will uh, have increased chances of getting a crit they will have better accuracy they will uh, do more damage and when you do more uh, crits you decrease your own stress level and that's crucial uh, with hellion what you want to do is that you want to use the barbaric job and you want to keep the enemy front monster stunned at all times so uh, he's gonna use the inspiring tune and when he does that the party will recover some stress and it's crucial that you keep the stress levels low in your team okay so he's gonna move up now now I have the party in the order I want to have them and now let's hope that the hellion hits with the stun yeah he's done it's now round four and my damage dealer can uh, get to work on the enemy but this slavering ghoul has a lot of HP so keep him chain stunned by using barbaric yoke and hopefully you will hit and if your team takes a lot of damage you, you heal them up and uh, at this point we're looking fine in most things but uh, stress level for my jester and the hellion of course it wouldn't hurt if we hit as well <laughs> for my Westal I bought 
the uh, dazzling light skill and what that does is that it gives me an extra opportunity to stun the enemy but I failed <laughs> but that that can be good to have as a second line defense if your hellion fails to stun the front two enemies uh, we want this uh, battle ballad to be active again so I use that after a while your uh, your team or your team members might become uh, a bit uh, restless and they might start complaining so it's it's crucial that you don't uh, spend too much time in a, any kind of fight and uh, be aware of moving around your characters too much that will give uh, your team stress penalties so we're more or less fine at this point, so I'm gonna move back uh, the Jester. Oh, the ghoul is going to die anyway. But uh, yeah, let's uh, buff her. And, well, let's heal the, the party. So that we have a 100% fully healed t uh, party. And once again, I'm trying to stun. This time I fail. So I'm probably gonna have to pay for it yeah and that was uh, what I meant we have failed to kill this uh, creature fast enough so uh, now it was the grave robber who complained about us taking too long time the so I'm, gonna, the beast, I'm gonna finish him off the greater the glory but what I did there at the end was that I moved the gesture to this place and what that does is that it gives him the ability to cast inspiring tune on the team and when he does that, he decreases uh, the stress levels on each of the party team member. Uh, so that's uh, a good thing that you can save for uh, the later stages of the battle. When there's only a big, uh, a big monster that you need to slowly shoo down by doing damage. And since you're using... Oh, sorry. Since you're using uh, your Hellion as a stunner... The Hellion won't do much damage, and uh, basically the only damage dealer you have will be uh, the Grave Robber. And these two uh, team members at the later stages of uh, each encounter might become more uh, buffers and healers if that is necessary. And that would keep your stress levels down overall. And if you have the uh, party buffed up, with the battle ballad they will also give get the greater chance at uh, striking critical hits and if they do uh, score a critical hit they will uh, heal some stress level as well let's have another fight i'll show you what how i do okay so we're still buffed so we get the strike first and i want to kill these two guys back here in the back rows because they deal low damage rolls or high damage rolls like this guy but she the cultist and enchantress she deals uh, low damage spells but they deal uh, high stress damage so you really do not want that uh, to hit your team so once again i heal up the Westal by dealing damage and now it's her turn and uh, yeah she didn't really accomplish much but you don't want this uh, marksman the, the damage dealer on the enemy team to be free to deal damage so I'm gonna move up move him up because I need him to deal damage so Shane stunned the front two at the pack and tried to kill the casters first because they deal insane amounts of stress on your uh, team and you do not at all want that trust me you want her gone at all costs so I'm using everything I have to to kill her first 
and then after that I'm gonna kill him. So buff the party. Keep the speed up. And the crit chances up. And hope that your uh, healer doesn't die. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, get to work on this bone marksman. Oh, good hit. And now the whole team uh, decreases their stress levels because of that masterful strike. My stun failed on him. Let's kill the marksman because he's dangerous. And let's start uh, healing up the team. He's also dead. He's Death also uh, dangerous because he casts. Lapse in concentration. He does damage that will also uh, cause uh, bleeding. And that's not good at all. So that was a great heal. Three uh, heal on each of my members in the team. So that's great. So we have this one in the bag. I'm gonna try to uh, stop that bleeding. And uh, yeah, let's kill that guy. And the whole team gains some uh, decreased stress when I deal a crit. And I'm keeping him stunned. And then after that, I'm trying to heal up my team slowly but surely. Now might be a good time to move uh, the jest back. And I'm gonna just give her a buff. I'm not gonna do anything special with her because I want the whole team to be uh, healed. And since this Hellion stun doesn't do much damage, we can heal up the party pretty well. And uh, as well as use the inspiring tune that will heal some stress. For the ones that need it. So let's uh, deal some damage. And heal the party. And then after that I hope it's my turn. Decrease in stress, and then kill this guy. That's how you do it. Keep the team alive. A trifling victory, and keep the whole team but stable. A nonetheless. And, uh, you might have to keep an eye on that stress levels, because you do not want stress levels this high. So after this, I'm going to take uh, probably no. I'm gonna do maybe one or two rooms more and then I'm gonna take a, a camping break for uh, the evening. So that was uh, how you keep your team alive in uh, the Darkest Dungeon. So I'm curious to uh, hear what you guys think. Do you think this uh, is a good and valid tactic in this game? Or do you have any other kind of uh, tactic that you use in the game? Please let me know, I would like to hear it. And as I said in the beginning, these two team members are crucial. They're mandatory. You have to have a Hellion that deal that uh, stun spell to the front row of the team. Although you can play without the Jester, I really see how the Battle Ballad really benefits your party a lot. Since you will do a lot of crits that will heal your stress levels and will keep the stress levels throughout the team low. And uh, I love the Vestal for uh, the group heals and the bigger heals for one party member. Although there are better healers for big heals in the game, 
I tried to use this one as much as possible because she is more reliable and she can also heal herself while doing damage so that's great. Really the only character I see as substitutable in the team is this one and you want to exchange her if you like to exchange her for another damage dealer like a bounty hunter or a highwayman or some other kind of tank that does uh, some good damage so yeah that's really much all for me guys and thank you all for watching and drop a like if you like the video so thanks for watching guys mm -hmm.